and a welfare state without manufacturing industry was never contempl contemplated. This is a dangerous sign for the local traffic sent to me by a German friend. It means beware of men carrying falling books. And now we go into my office. The main problem with the economic theory on which today's economic world order is based is that this theory, Ricardian trade theory, visualizes international trade as a barter of labor hours. Uh, there is no capital, uh, there is no knowledge, uh, and if one accepts this basis uh, that a labor hour equals a labor hour, well, then free trade uh, can, be, uh, can be said as creating factor price equalization, that the prices of capital and of labor all over the world will tend to be the same. There are much more sophisticated theories, but the theory on which the WTO has been based um, is Ricardo's theory in its most simple version. The alternative economic theory, the one that has made nations one after another uh, take the passage from poor to rich, is based on observations of reality, not on more abstract theories. And the first key observation that was made had to do with the gold that flowed in from Mexico and Peru to Spain in the 16th century. Everybody thought that Spain would get fantastically rich, but the opposite thing happened. Uh, Spain got deindustrialized, and all the gold ended up in countries where there were no mines. The gold from Spain ended up in large Italian cities like Florence and Venice and in the Dutch Republic. So one can say that the paradox that created economics in the early 1600s uh, was how to, explain, how to explain that all the gold ended up in places where there were no mines. The first person to make uh, an economic theory of this, the first person who made a theory of unequal development uh, was the uh, Italian economist Antonio Serra from Naples. Antonio Serra's little book uh, was written while he was in jail in Naples uh, for rebellion against the Spanish Viceroy. The title of his book is A Brief Treatise on the Causes that May Make Gold and Silver Abound in Countries Where There Are No Mines. Antonio Serra isolated the two, two main causes of economic wealth. First, increasing returns. Secondly, a synergy of a great division of labor with economic activities that are subject to increasing returns. Increasing returns essentially means that when the production of some item is expanded, uh, the higher the quantity of production, the lower the cost. Serra explains Venice wealth as opposed to Naples poverty by explaining the virtuous circles that are created because of increasing returns. He says a minor miracle happens in Venice uh, because they have such a big traffic, because they have such a big trade, they have a very high volume of production. And then he says because of this high volume of production, their production costs sink. And because the production costs go down even more, they attract even more customers. And this was the first book where these virtual circles coming from manufacturing industry and from handicraft are mentioned. Sarah also makes the explicit point that this can not happen in agriculture. Agriculture is subject to the opposite, to diminishing returns. The second important principle is explained in this little pamphlet that actually entered this house uh, yesterday. A discourse on the necessity of encouraging mechanic industry. 
little pamphlet published in London in 1689. On page 29 in this book, the author introduces to the paradox of famines and he says, it is also remarkable that mechanics prevent famine in a nation. This at first sight will appear as a paradox, that the multiplying of mouths that eat corn whose hands sow none should yet increase food, which matter of fact demonstrates the truth not with, notwithstanding for whoever saw a famine in Holland. On the contrary, they who sow none yet supply other parts of the world with corn, which they affect by means of their arts and trade. And here is where the wealth from the Americas, the gold and silver from Mexico and Peru, ended up via Spain. The first economics professor north of Germany was Anders Berg in Sweden, and Anders Berg's book uh, also states the knowledge from 200 years earlier that the real gold mines are not the gold mines but manufacturing industry. So for several hundred years this was accepted knowledge in Europe. When economics got established in England it was through the work of Adam Smith and Adam Smith twisted the branch that became economics uh, by reducing both trade and production to labor hours. And it's on this basis that David Ricardo um, made his trade theory. The problem of trade theory is then that it doesn't distinguish between different economic activities, those that are subject, those that are subject to increasing returns and those that are subject to diminishing returns. So before David Ricardo's principle of comparative advantage should be introduced in a nation, a preceding strategy has always been emulation. Emulation means copy in order to improve upon. So sport is essentially uh, an act of emulation. You try to run as fast as the fastest one. And emulation was also the name of the game in economics. If you live in the Stone Age and you see that the tribe across the river is getting into some new material, they're moving into the Bronze Age, you have the choice of sticking to your comparative advantage in the Stone Age or emulating the neighbors into the Bronze Age. The obvious common sense choice is emulation. The economics that developed after World War II unlearned the historical differences between economic activities. So after the Berlin Wall, the Washington institutions have developed what I call a string of red herrings of uh, false thoughts uh, that don't lead to the understanding of development. First, they said, get the prices right. Then, get the property rights right then get the institutions right, then get the governance right, get the competitiveness right, right, get the innovation right, get the entrepreneurship right, the education, the climate, the diseases, the culture, but the missing dimension is get the economic activities right. Classical development economists recognized that poverty was a result of cumulative causations that reinforced each other. After World War II, we saw that mechanism again when the Allied started to de-industrialize Germany under the Morgenthau Plan. The Morgenthau Plan had as its goal to uh, make Germany into a pastoral state by removing industry. The plan was a disaster and it was abandoned in March 1947, when Herbert Hoover reported back to the United States that uh, de-industrialized Germany had 